Click on it. Oh, you're going to have to offer it. Just go. 50 clicks. <laughs> Drinks are on me. Um, this, was, uh, this actually started as a working title. Um, and when I started putting the deck together, I quickly realized that I was probably going to be talking for about three days, long after, long after you've all gone to the pub and, and that vanished, but I suspect some of you have been to the pub already. So instead of that, my clicker doesn't work. Well, yeah. So instead of talking randomly about any SEO problem, what I decided to do was focus on two really significantly large problems that I've faced recently, okay? Uh, to be specific, and what I'd like to do is to take you through these, these two problems. First one, straightforward perhaps, but applies to so many of you out there. The second one, very, very mysterious. Um, and then I'm going to go on with a wrap up. So I'm going to teach you or talk to you about how we discovered these issues, the steps we took to overcome them, and, and, and what the results were. Now, I've, I've called these chapters rather than parts because um, there's a common thread running throughout this entire uh, story. And that thread is books, which I love. And in fact, the first two chapters are devoted to one of my favorite places. Uh, and in fact, one of my favorite clients, and that's Waterstone's books. So without further ado, into chapter one and the first, the first big problem. So I need to introduce an old friend, Suspicious Flux, which you know I love. And if, you, if you've never heard of Sus Suspicious Flux, I can't say it. If you've never heard of Suspicious Flux, basically it's those movements in the SERPs, for the terms that you care about, they drop two positions, they come up, they drop three, they come up, drop down, and that's often a precursor to something disastrous happening. So on this next slide, you're gonna see a huge disaster for a search term that Waterstones care about. So, what do we have here? This is a chart showing Waterstones positions, Google UK, for the term, The Bone Clots, which is actually an award-winning book. And in this chart, and if you can't read it precisely, don't worry too much, but on the uh, y-axis we've got positions 1 to 100 in Google. And on the x-axis, along the bottom, we've got a date range. We've got August, September, and October. So we've got three months. So what's going on in this chart? What are two things going on? The first thing is that Waterstones' positions, obviously, they're going from the middle of page one. They're suddenly dropping out. They're dropping out for four days. They're coming back up for three days. They're dropping right out of the top 100. And then they're coming back all the way along. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that's happening here is that the average overall position of Waterstones for this term has dropped from the middle of page one to the bottom of page one. That's the glass ceiling. This is typical of um, the symptoms of what's going on here. And later on, when we step back, you'll see that glass ceiling really, really clearly. So, what, so what, what's causing all of this? And some of you might have an idea. That is a hardback book. Books don't just come in one variety of hardback, but you get hardbacks and paperback books. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that paperback book onto this very same chart. The hardback book is in pink. The paperback, if you can see that, is in yellow. Now if you look to the right hand side, you can see the classic symptoms of internal conflict, where the hardback in pink drops out for one day, the paperback spikes in for one day, and the hardback comes out. And in the middle of the chart, you can see classic internal conflict, where there is very little coexistence. But what about all of the other drops? What's causing those? Well, books don't just come in two varieties of hardback and paperback. You also get e-books, audio books, different editions, student editions, special editions, signed editions, and so on and so forth. So one book can actually exist in multiple, multiple different versions. But we want people to buy these books, we want people to find them, but they're obviously causing a lot of confusion, so we need to fix this. And this is a problem that doesn't just apply to books, but it applies to so many of you out there where you sell multiple products that exist in many multiple varieties. So to fix this, this first problem, that has to be taken care of before we can really optimize the site, we introduce the canonical book solution. 
Now this next chart, I know it's going to be really hard to see at the back there, but you can download the deck, but I'm going to take you through it anyway. How do we fix this? Because there are multiple books here. Well, the first thing we need to do is think about the searcher. Get inside the mind of the searcher and understand how the searcher thinks when they're searching for this, this book. So we have group A and group B. Group A is on the left and group B is on the right. Group A we call the canonical book. Group B is not, is the non-canonical group. So these exist separately. So what happens in the canonical group? Well, searchers, when they search for books, generally search for the title of the book, the bone clocks. They don't search for hardback and they don't search for paperback. So this part, this group, cannot be differentiated either from a searcher perspective or therefore from a theming and optimization perspective, okay? Because the content's too similar. These are essentially exactly the same thing. So on the right-hand side, however, we think that a searcher, if I'm searching for an audio book, I append my search criteria with audio book. I do the same for ebook. These, we can differentiate, so this we can separate out. So this becomes the non-canonical group. So let's go back to the canonical group. How does that work? Well, when books come out, you get a hardback first, and that's out for a few weeks. That gets reviews, that gets links, that gets authority, that gets visibility, that gets purchased and makes money. Then along comes the paperback book. And while the paperback can exist in coexistence in the bookshelf, it cannot. It cannot online. So the hardback, so the paperback, then becomes the canonical, and the hardback canonicals up to that, and any other very similar assigned editions, they canonical up as well. So we only have one canonical group here, or one canonical item of non-differentiated objects. The others, okay, on the right-hand side in group B, we leave them out of this, because these are themed separately. If conflict still arises, then we can take them out of the crawl space. But let's assume the conflict doesn't arise. What we also need to do is remember that people will want different varieties of books, so we provide reciprocal theme links throughout the world. So if I happen to come into the canonical paperback, and I want to buy a book as a gift, then there's a clear pathway to that, but it's non-conflicting. And if I want an e-book, there's a clear pathway to that. Just as from the e-book, I can go back up to the hardback or the paperback. So, this applies to millions, millions of books. And we have some really promising early results. So I'm just going to show you two early results. There we are, the first one. That's the bone clocks. You can see as we step back in time, as we look over a longer date range, you can see that classic glass ceiling at the bottom of page one. So often a symptom or a result of internal conflict. But the switch was flicked, and we've come out the other side. And we're now in a position to think about how we can improve, how we can take water stones to the bone clocks from position four or five up to position one. So let's get on with some basic SEO. Here's another one, The Organized Mind, a brilliant book, really brilliant to organize your mind. Um, so, and this one, you can see the switch was flicked on the same day, and we've We've actually come up and we've started to do much better. The internal conflict has been sorted out. Okay, so bear that in mind. The internal conflict has been taken care of. So what do we do now? Well, let's start to really optimize the site. The big fix is in place. We've no longer got all, all of these issues. Okay, so we can start to think about the searcher. How are they searching? What are they looking for? What are they looking for at Christmas? Are they looking for particular lists of books and stuff like that? Then we can create those optimized pages. We can think about internal linking. We can think about wonderful content and all this stuff because the big fix is in place. But as we move into chapter two, just as with any, any good book, things can start to take a turn for the worse. And that's exactly what happens here. That's exactly what happened. So chapter two is a series of mysterious disappearances. And it appears that somebody's been stealing our books. Now, I'm sure you guys love books as much as I do, and I, and I love to have piles of books around the house. I have them in the bathroom. I, I have them in the lounge, in the hall, everywhere. And about once a week I get home and they've all vanished. But that's not theft. That's my wife tidying up after me and my son. But 
You love parts of books, don't you? You need to have them. But imagine if you had a library, okay? And in your library, you put a book right there on the top shelf, in the first or second or third position. You went out for an hour, you came back and it had gone. Well, that's, that's exactly what's happening here. This has nothing to do with what's been gone before. Now, here's the first book that vanished from our shelves. Test your cat. That little rascal, just waiting to be interrogated. Just asking, uh, asking to be quizzed and grilled. But I have a dog, and um, my dog's, I love my dog, but he's a, little, he's a little dumb. And eventually he's going to go to head office, so I was chatting to my son. When he's gone, we need a new creature. Are we going to get a cat? Are we going to make sure that cat is intelligent? So I'm going to buy this book. So where do I find that book? Well, I'll tell you where I find it. The last place I saw it, it was in position one in Google. So let's go to the Google and have a look and see if it's still in position one. And it has, it's not. It vanished. On the 10th of January this year, that book disappeared from the SERPs entirely. And we didn't do anything to make that happen. It just vanished. So now we start to wake up in a cold sweat. Because it's not just that book, it's other books. Okay? Here's a book called The Establishment that vanished on the 28th of January. Just dropped out of the SERPs. And it's not just that one. Day after day, hour after hour, we're losing books. Literally dozens of others. So we need to find out what's going on here. So there's only one way. There's only one way to really find out what's going on. And that means it's time to explore the search. That means it's time to really delve deep into the search results. This is where we kind of break into a hot sweat and stay up late at night, really trying to find out what's going on. So let's go to the search for that first book. Test your cat. So on the left-hand side, you've got the chart, which shows the 10th of January, the day, the day they dropped out. So as we look at the search, okay, on the right, we're looking for two things. This is not internal conflict, the same rules do not imply. What we're looking for is somebody who's moved into the SERPs in a position similar to ours. Okay? That's the first rule. Now there are two. We've got Reader's Digest who moved up to position 7. So they've moved in from outside the top 100 near us. The second rule, in this instance, they have to have moved into our space, plus or minus, no more than two positions. That's the rule. So, it would appear that HarperCollins has moved into our position. Now, HarperCollins is the publisher of this book. Let's see if that's the case. So, we do a historic overlay. And indeed, it's true that HarperCollins has moved into our position. Let's go to the SERPs. Now, this is where it starts to get a little strange. Because HarperCollins is in, Waterstones is out, but Waterstones was in the knowledge panel on the right-hand side. And now Waterstones has gone from the knowledge panel. But who's in the knowledge panel? Google's in the knowledge panel. Remember that for later. What about the other book? What about the establishment? Okay, let's go to the 28th of January. Let's explore the search. Two people have moved up on that same day. We've got Socialist Review, who've moved up uh, to uh, at least 85 positions to 16. But they don't fit into Rule 2, so we can disregard them. So Rule 2, that's Penguin. Okay, not the algorithm, so don't confuse this. Don't say, tweet John Ancher said, there's a penguin out update on the 28th of January, so that's not the case. This is the publisher. They've moved into, within two positions. We were in nine, they're in seven. But also, look above that result. Penguin was already there in the SERPs. They were already there. There was some coexistence. There's a historic overlay. This is Penguin, the publisher, who's taken our positions. So what's causing it to happen? And what's causing it to happen now? Well, I can tell you what's causing it to happen now. That's Google being completely random. But what's causing it to happen? We need to take a deeper look. We need to play spot the difference. So, on the left-hand side, we've got Waterstones. On the right-hand side, we've got HarperCollins. Waterstones have got a synopsis. HarperCollins have gotten about this book, and they look slightly different, but you know what? If you compress that one on the right down, they're exactly the same. And here they are clearly, exactly the same, word for word, about 150 words of exactly the same content. That's what caused this to happen. And this is genuinely shareable content. And I can tell you what, despite what I heard uh, from the Google guys this morning, 
A link back to say this text came from there and we haven't stole it makes no difference whatsoever. Here's further proof. Here's the establishment. And this one's slightly different. So we've got water stones in pink and we've got penguin the publisher in yellow. And we've also got penguin in green. So you can see the coexistence. I'll tell you what happened with the green and the yellow. The green, which was the penguin hardback, they canonicaled it to the paperback, so that's all fine. But how can we coexist? This is going to get a little strange in a second. How come we coexisted our book and their hardback, but we can't coexist with a paperback? Surely, surely the synopsis is exactly the same. Well, let's take a look. Here's a Waterstone synopsis, and there's about 220 words there. Okay, all about the establishment. Let's take a look at Penguin. So we've got the conflicting paperback on the top, and we've got the hardback on the bottom. What you can see there is the readable text that's on the screen. Okay? It's exactly the same, but it's not the same as ours. But there was coexistence, and then we were taken out by the hardback. But if you can see clearly, I, I, I doubt if you can see from up the top there, um, there's a read more. There's a click to expand and read more. So then I start to think, yeah, but hang on a minute, what, what, what does Google say about read more? Well, we know what Google says. We know what Google came out and said recently. Oh, uh, yeah, we discount what's in a read more. Let's see what's in a read more. Okay, the read more of the paperback turns out to be exactly the same as Waterstone. So I can tell you now that Google is reading what's in the click to read more. Here's Google's quote, content within click to expand, menus of tabs may be discounted, etc." etc. Well, it may be discounted from a positioning perspective, but I tell you what, it is not discounted from a penalty perspective, and it will come and bite you. So, we may need to rethink some of the things that we've been saying recently. Okay, so we need to fix this. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going I'm to speed up a little. We changed the synopsis of a bunch of pages. We made our synopsis unique. Okay? And then we resubmitted those pages. How long do you think before there was any effect? So we changed our synopsis, we customized them. Was there any effect? Here we are two months later. A week? A month? You've got 15 seconds to tweet me the answer, and there will be a fabulous prize for the winner who gets it closest. Um, did it work at all? Actually, the prize will be beer or something. <laughs> or wine, or something like that. So, five, four, three, two, one, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how long it took. We made the update on the 1st of March, and within 10 hours, we saw phenomenal results. That's how responsive Google is to changes in content. That's, that's incredible, at least I was surprised by that. So just by changing our synopsis, making them slightly different from the others, this had a huge impact. Now think, if you've got affiliates, and you've got resellers, and you're putting your content out there and letting other people just copy it, you need to be monitoring their visibility. You need to have an agreement in place that they're not just going to take all your content. Now, let's go back to the library. Now, this bit gets me. We're back in the library. We're back in the SERPs. Waterstones is back in. That's brilliant. Okay, they're not back where they were. Thank you, Google. But look, look on the right. The little fella, he's over there. Waterstones is back in the knowledge panel. They're back, thank you, Google. But there's Google there with a synopsis that's exactly the same as ours. So I don't, I don't get this. I don't get this. So we've done nothing. Google's decided to penalize us because it's found two people out there with the same synopsis. It's kicked us out of the knowledge panel. Once we've changed it, it's kicked us, it's led us back in, but not to the same position organically. And all the wire that sits there with exactly the same synopsis. Yeah. What do you do with that? So, next, well, we've got about five million books to deal with, so we're working on some different things. Now, chapter three is really short. It's only three slides long, so, so don't worry. I initially put a whole bunch of stuff in here about a future search, and, and, and I was getting really excited about it, but my team said, just, just take it out, I think you're nuts. So, <laughs> instead of that, we're going to have some takeaways, stuff that you can take away. Okay, the first thing, I'm going I'm, I'm to compress these down. Use data. All this is not possible without data. When I say data, I don't just mean your data and your data and your data and your data up there, because we're all busy looking at our own data sets, we're all busy looking at our own uh, SERPs. 
But this is other people's data, so you need data on the entire search set so that you can do things like see who jumped in on the same day, and you need historic data, you need to be able to roll back in time. And different to internal conflict, don't forget, use that rule, plus or minus two, because 99% of the time, that's somebody else taking your visibility. Penultimate slide. You need to know who else is using your content. That falls into two groups. You've got people you know and people you don't. Okay? People you know get an agreement in place. Take a look and see how they're using your content. Because they cannot any longer keep on using your content, whether they're bloggers or affiliates or resellers or whatever. People you don't, I initially put find them and kill them, but can't really say that. So <laughs> use data to find out, and then, and then you can get in touch with them another way and tell them to stop. Now finally, finally, as, as, as much as I think we are, we're not ready to abandon the keyword game. And I, and I had a story, but I'm, I'm out of time. We're not ready to abandon the keyword game. Keyword is still important. We need, to, we need to get inside the mind of our searches because that helps us with the canonical fix, okay? That helps us with the theming. That helps us, that helps us to, to actually eliminate conflict because once we've got inside the mind of the searchers and understood what they're searching for and how they're searching those essential keywords, we can then optimize our content and we can also make sure that we eliminate any possibility of internal conflict as well. And I've got a great flowchart on that which I've updated recently and I'll tweet that out later. And I think that's all I've got time for, so thank you. Thank you very much, John.